This movie isn't as good as everyone says, and I'm not just saying that to be contrarian and get you to click on the video and get you to stay tuned until the end. No, 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 no. I'm going to be real with you. I had fun with this movie, but it's being massively overhyped. Watch until the end if you want to hear my full explanation as to why I think this movie is being overhyped. The reality is, with these types of movies, these MCU movies, the, the comic book movies... Oh, I mean, I should also say, <laughs> I'm not going to give away any spoilers for this because I'm not a dick. Um, yeah, I, I, th there's a lot of fun to be had in this movie, and I wouldn't want to ruin that for any of you. So genuinely, please do like stay tuned if you want to hear, spoiler-free, how this movie I don't think is living up to what I believe to be the internet overhype machine. But that's not to say the movie is bad in any way, shape, or form. There are There are effectively five main points that... I think we need to touch on with a movie like this. Does it advance the MCU timeline? Are the cameos and fan service up to scratch? We need to talk about the plot. We need to talk about the acting because a huge part of this whole thing was the on-screen chemistry being sold to us by Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. Does it live up? And we need to talk about the actual Deadpool stuff, you know, because that's what the movie is. Now, Normally in a review, I would also want to talk about things a little bit beyond the surface level aesthetics and substance. I would want to talk about things like the pacing, the cinematography, the main themes being portrayed in the movie, the character arcs that the characters go through. That's not the sort of thing that people tune into these videos or indeed into these movies to watch. Just before we get into this, I've noticed that as much as 95% of people who watch my content are not even subscribed to the channel. So please guys, it really helps me out. It's free. Just hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and get notified whenever a new bit of Silver Screen Dudes content goes up. It would really help me. Thank you very much. Let's actually focus on the stuff that you've basically put your butt in the seat for. The Deadpool stuff. Now, it is great. There is no doubt that it is great. But you have to factor in that we are in the third Deadpool movie now. The swearing and gratuitous violence are fantastic. The breaking of the fourth wall is fantastic. You know, the Deadpool stuff. But here's where the problem comes in. It's getting a bit old hack. It's getting a bit old shtick now. Come again. Now, don't get me wrong. Did I get a lot of laughs in this movie? Yeah. Were the fourth wall breaks really good? Yeah. Was all the swearing fantastic and creative? Yes. Absolutely. And was the violence, the hyper violence on display for all to see? Of course it was. And was it was that hyper violence good? <laughs> it was freaking great. It was freaking great. You would have seen this stuff from uh, you know him beating up all the guys in the trailers. That's, you know, one of the early scenes in the movie. What they don't tell you is what he's beating them up with, which is, again, it's a lot of fun. Um, no spoilers, but I, I think you guys will get a kick out of that. I really do. But we don't just want to focus on the hyperviolence with Deadpool. We want to focus on the hyperviolence with the Wolverine. And boy, does Hugh Jackman get violent in this movie. And it's glorious to see when both of them are either going at each other or going at other people in tandem. It's such fun stuff. When it hits, it hits really, really hard. And then that leads nicely into the whole dynamic between Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. Look, back way back in that Wolverine Origins movie was the first time they did this whole Deadpool and Wolverine thing. It was terrible back then. But these two obviously developed quite a serious real-life bromance from that. And, you know, th th this has been, I guess, almost 20 years in the making, this this coming together of these two actors in these roles. And it's done properly. Look, they're in their suits, full suits, I won't say anymore. They're in their suits, they're on, on screen chemistry. It's, it's just contagiously ineffable. It's, it's so great to see two guys who are proficient, damn proficient actors, genuinely having such a damn good time you know this is Hugh Jackman's swan song there's there's no that he's not coming back that's not to say he dies that's not to say he doesn't die I have not given anything away by saying that he's just openly said this really is his last one he's an old man now his body just can't take getting into that shape although Jesus Christ he's got into good shape again for this movie 
I mean, maximum respect to Hugh Jackman, man. I gotta say, the okay, so is their on screen chemistry good? Yes, fantastic. Is the Deadpool stuff good? Yes, fantastic. So, why am I doing this whole well, yeah, but the movie I don't think is as good as everyone says? Why did I start off the review like that? It's one word, guys plot. The plot in this movie is terrible because of a gaping bloody plot hole. Now, this plot hole happens in the first 10 minutes of the movie. And I was, you know, I caught it. I don't believe I'm the only one who caught it. Although saying that, I haven't actually seen any other critics, reviewers or outlets focusing on this. So maybe there's an argument to be made that I'm making much ado about nothing. But I'll explain it and you guys can tell me what you think. So this stuff you've seen in the trailer, he's at his birthday party. He gets taken to the TVA. There's this new guy in charge of the TVA called Paradox. Paradox is essentially in charge of this gets quite meta now. And OK, a contingent of you may say eh, bah, 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 spoilers, plot spoilers. It's it's the first 10 minutes. This I'm not giving away any big the fun stuff in the movie. I'm not giving away now. OK. But this is, a, uh, it'll explain. Let me let me just get to the point here. The This Paradox guy, he's got Wade Wilson in, and he's explaining to him that he's looking after a timeline from Earth. Don't hate me, comic book fans. I believe it's 10015. In this movie, 10015 timeline, it's the Fox timeline, essentially. So they're having some fun with the fact that that timeline's trash and it's being destroyed. It's, you know, it's wink, wink, nudge, nudge, meta stuff. All of that's great. But what he's saying to Wade Wilson is that this timeline is essentially dying because it lost its anchor character. This case, that would be Logan from, you know, the end of the Logan movie where he died. We all know that. And so as a result, the the, the Fox, I'm just going to call it the Fox timeline. The Fox timeline is dying. And Wade's like, OK, you know, kind of stuff happens. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be that invested in it. Now, where Paradox comes in and he says, yeah, but. I don't want to hang around for 1500 years in order to watch this happen. I need this thing to happen now. I want this thing to be sped up now. So I've invented this MacGuffin device. Now they do have some fun by actually owning the fact that it's a MacGuffin. Um, but it's like, I've invented this MacGuffin device to speed it up. And now here's where the plot, massive plot error happens. Why does he need Wade Wilson there? You think... Or what Wade Wilson thinks, which is what any intelligent audience member would think is, oh, so in order to stop this timeline dying, we need to go find another Logan from a different timeline, right? So we're still in multiverse territory here. That would make sense if they were to do that. And that's kind of the initial direction that the journey goes under. But again, coming back to it, here's where the plot detail is. Paradox says to Wade Wilson, no, no, we don't want you to do that. We want this timeline destroyed. So why have you brought Wade Wilson there? What purpose does telling him that you're going to speed up the process of his timeline dying? How does that help you as a villain? Because he doesn't only tell him the plan while he's completely free. He then basically doesn't give him any impetus to do anything else than stop him. But it's like, if you knew he was going to stop you or it would be a safe thing to assume that he would stop you because not many people respond well to being told, hey, your entire existence is about to be wiped out. So you're telling the guy who reasonably could stop you because, you know, he's a freaking mutant. You don't want him to stop you. Why did you bring him here? Oh, yes. Plot armor. Because if you don't bring him here and you don't inform him that this thing is coming and you don't somehow push him down that track, then we don't have a movie. And I'm afraid that is the epitome of weak ass storytelling. When you when, when your character gets involved because reasons, not through good storytelling or good denouement. Something happens to character that informs character's decision character gets set on a trajectory this is 101 stuff the movie literally doesn't do that nothing happens to character character gets told about something characters told that they shouldn't be involved so you're wondering well why did you get the character involved then because you are dumbass villain if you've done that and that's the only defense you have well the villain's dumb it's like yeah but 
how does that make a good movie? So the plot is so paper thin and so bad. And the reason that they do all of the plot exposition in the first 10 minutes, and this is where we get back into the positives, right? Because effectively what they do to try and hide this plot is the cameos. Now listen, I'm not going to beat around the bush. <laughs> the cameos are awesome. The cameos are absolutely amazing. It is the best case of fan service from the last 20 years of the Fox universe, as well, I hope I'm not saying too much here, as well as giving you fan service that could have been, that was rumored to be cast, and that never happened. And it's not just one instance of those. There's like a few instances of those. It, 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 I will not say more on the cameos. What I will say, none of them failed. They all landed. They all had a purpose. They all worked. The cameos were super fun. If you came to this movie on the basis that you wanted to just get your rocks off and see good cameos and see things that could might have been portrayed in a different way had they been managed properly, hey, you're going to enjoy this movie. For me personally, I got an enjoyment out of that, but I needed there to be reasoning. I needed there to be some substance behind it because otherwise we get into the tried and tested visual noise style over substance or style without substance which is unfortunately what we've ended up with here we've ended up in a position where we've got all this great style great acting chemistry two actors who we've wanted to see together in these roles for ages mega fan service all of this great stuff cameos that we would have wet our pants at in the last 20 years if we'd had them in a real capacity all good stuff why are they all there yeah reasons you see the problem. You see the problem. And finally, to end on, this is why I'm going to throw shade. Not at the movie, because it is not the damn movie's responsibility or fault for this next point. This is an internet problem and a media problem. There have been outlets like Heroic Hollywood who have done reports on Instagram and on their websites like, if Infinity War was a 9 and Endgame was a 10, then Deadpool and Wolverine is an eight when it comes to the importance of the MCU. Bull shib. The biggest lies. I, I feel dirty using these words, but fake news, bro. Like, biggest case of fake news. If this movie didn't exist, and don't get me wrong, I'm happy it exists, but if this movie didn't exist, the MCU would not be any different the mutants have already been confirmed to exist we've seen them in miss marvel we've seen them in the marvels the mutants are already a thing this movie did not do anything to advance the okay i am giving away a, a what some people may say spoilers here apologies but i have to get the point home right this movie doesn't advance any wider thing in the mcu like if you're expecting this to be like a big reset button and acknowledge that Phase 4 was pretty mediocre at best and quite crap at worst, which, to be fair, this movie makes fun of. Like, it, it doesn't do that. This movie is it's self-contained. It does its own thing. And yeah, it's, it, it, it does not advance the MCU in any way, shape, or form. That is not the movie's fault. That is... The, that is... I get, no, no, the traders didn't even promise that. But that is the PR agencies, the media outlets, the, the, the various journalists. It's BS. It's the biggest load of BS. This movie does nothing to advance the MCU timeline. So seriously adjust your expectations if that's what you think you're getting out of this. So the verdict. Listen, I've got to score Deadpool and Wolverine 6.5 out of 10. The f the verdict is this. When it hits, it hits hard. It is a brilliant example of fan service. It is a superb love letter to the last 20 years of Fox comic book movies, taking the good, praising it, and taking the bad and the ugly and poking fun at it in a tasteful way. It gives you a duo who we've wanted to see in this capacity for 20 years done properly. You can tell that the actors are having fun with this, which is highly enjoyable. 
you can revel in the cameos that, that, that this movie throws at you. But it can't be understated how terrible the plot in this movie is, verging on non-existent, which unfortunately divulges into a case of visual noise, rendering the movie fun, but not having the wow factor that I hoped. But listen, there might have been reasons for that. It might have been a case of, well, it wasn't as fun as I hoped because the crowd I was with was a bit meh. Like, I popped quite hard for the cameos, but, you know, it's a contagious thing when you're in the cinema. You pop and other people pop. It lifts the mood. No one really popped for the cameos in my screening. And that's not because they were bad. I just had a bit of a meh, meh ongoing, uh, a bit of a meh crowd with me. So hopefully you guys maybe go to a later screening than I did and you have a blast because everyone's, it's like a sporting event and everyone's going nuts. Oh, he appeared. Oh, she appeared. Oh, they appeared. Oh, amazing. Maybe you'll have that. And if you do, I'm sure that'll bolster the experience. But those are some of my thoughts on the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. It's definitely better than Deadpool 2, but I still don't think it can touch Deadpool 1, which for me is is damn close to perfection as a, a high production B movie comic book movie. I mean, it's just wonderful, that first movie. I don't think this movie is as good as that personally. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Leave your thoughts down below because I would love to know what your experience was with this movie. Do you think it's being a bit overhyped or are you like putting it in goaded territory like most of the internet is? Let me know. Uh, and there is a subscribe button here. Uh, another video for you guys to watch up here. So please go ahead and do all that. Stay tuned to the channel. As I said, subscribe if you haven't done so already. A lot of reviews coming your way this week and, and next week. So I'll see you guys very soon. Bye for now. Thank you for watching, guys.